So far so good. It's awesome there's no cars. Da -da -da -da. Hey, what's happening? Hugo Mendes from Chaskis here. And today I'm releasing the first of a series of videos about the dirty Kansas. Yes, this 200 mile gravel cycling race that takes place in Kansas. And guess what? I'm doing it this year. Oh yeah. But first, if you're new to the Chaskis channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also click on that bell to be notified when I release new videos, all right? The Dirty Kansas has been my bucket list pretty much since I got into gravel cycling and it's gotten so popular that now you have to participate in this lottery. Well, apparently I got lucky and got picked to do this race. So in this new series of videos, you're going to learn through my own experience how to get prepared for it. How about that? Each week we'll be focused on a specific topic that I hope you find useful, especially if you are thinking about doing this race in the future mental preparation, training, logistics, etc. And it would also come from the perspective of uh, an ordinary, regular athlete like me, maybe like you, who, you know, has never done anything like this before. Yes, I'm super excited about this opportunity, but I'll be honest, I'm also intimidated. Uh, I've never done anything like this, so it's complete unknown territory for me. So in this first video, I'm gonna share with you 10 facts that I have found are unique to the Dirty Kansas and that I also think define the nature and the scale of this race. You ready? Dirty Kansas is an ultra endurance gravel cycling ride that takes place in Emporia, Kansas, the first Saturday of Memorial Day. And this year, 2020, takes place on May the 30th. There are several distances that are available on this ride. They go from 25 miles all the way up to 350 miles. It's called the DKXL, uh, 100 miles and 200 miles. And I would say that the 200 mile distance is probably the most popular or the distance where the race is the most known for. The 200 mile course, which is the ride that I'm gonna be doing, is on a single loop can you believe that and actually goes through the flint hills of east central kansas it's not called the flint hills for nothing okay the hills have big amounts of flint which is this mineral that native americans who used to live in that area used to make axes and arrowheads why because flint is a very very sharp material that's why it's pretty important to pick, for instance, the right set of tires because Flint likes to cut through your tires. The course is remote. There's very little traffic. There's very little maintenance. There's almost no pavement. There's going to be times where you're going to be by yourself for hours. So, oh yeah. So when you think about Kansas, you think it's flat? No. The course is hilly. There are all kinds of hills, all kinds of climbing, all kinds of rolling hills. And actually, during the whole course, you're going to be covering 10,000 feet worth of climbing. So it's not flat at all. There are cutoff times for when you arrive to each checkpoint as well as when you depart. I think that the cutoff times are based on an average speed of 10 miles per hour. And I think that an overall cut of time, it's about, I'm not 100% sure here, but I think it's between 21 and up to 23 hours. So it's a long day. This is a race that's practically self-supported. Why do I say that? Because there's three checkpoints during the race. There's two checkpoints where you can actually have access and contact with your crew. And there's a third point which is called like a neutral water oasis point where you do not have access to your crew your crew cannot support you uh, cannot be on the race course the only time that they can be on the race course is when they have to go to pick you up because you had to withdraw from the race um, and race organizers are very very clear about not only that but also the fact that you're on your own 
they're not gonna go and come and pick you up when you stop or when you have any issue or when you want to quit now during the race it is allowed for participants for riders to help each other so that is allowed what kind of bikes can you ride bikes like the one that i have here uh, and all kinds of bikes really um, mountain bikes fat tires single speed tandem the only bikes that you cannot ride are e-bikes and pedal assist bikes fair and last fact is navigation okay the course has very limited markings riders are encouraged to bring their own like navigation maps and sheets and of course you have a gps it's ideal to download the routes to your computer so you can just find your way so, yep, you're pretty much on your own. You need to be good with navigation, apparently, which I'm not. All right, so now that you've learned more about Dirty Cancer, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Share your thoughts in the comments area below. And also, if you've done the DK before, what do you think? Did I miss anything, anything big? Um, let me know in the comments. I would love to know about that. That's it for video number one. If you found this content useful, I invite you to click that subscribe button Give it a like, share it with a friend, and also check out Chesky's on Instagram, that is at CheskyUp. I usually post um, all kinds of stories and post about uh, the Chesky community, and also my day-to-day -day progress towards conquering the DK200. Because at Chesky's, we're a community of everyday endurance athletes who work hard to achieve big goals. Send to CheskyUp.